Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. And on today's episode, man, I got a surprise and it is awesome. I have to say, this is probably the coolest looking RC I have seen in a long time. Now, before we get into it, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory of how this happened. So if you're familiar with the channel, you're familiar with me, you know there's an issue with me going to the hobby shop and getting paints because occasionally uh, cars come home with me. <laughs> um, so my wife was heading out one evening this week and was going to pick up dinner for us. So the pizza shop is right in the same shopping center as the hobby shop. So she asked me, is there anything I needed? And I did. I needed a couple cans of paint. I needed a can of smoke, needed a can of chrome. <clears throat> so I gave her the part numbers and all that stuff. She knows, you know, if I give her PS31, she knows exactly where to go and what to get. She goes to the hobby shop and she texts me from the hobby shop to make sure I only needed one can of each. And I said, yeah, I only need one can of each. You know, these are not common colors. They're going to go a long way. So I just needed one. And I jokingly said, hey, if they have this kit there, you know, you could go ahead and pick that up too. Knowing there was no way they had this in stock. This thing is ginormous. I'm going to take it off the bench just because it's, you know, bigger than my camera view. <clears throat> but I jokingly said, hey, if they have that low C Promoto X, you know, go ahead and pick up one. And then she sent me a picture of it sitting on display, just the boxes. And I was like, oh my God, they have one? She's like, yeah, they have a red and a blue one. She didn't ask what color I wanted. She just said they had a red and a blue one. I was like, I don't care. Either one of them's awesome, you pick. So she brought home the blue one. This, I haven't even run it yet. I've taken it out of the box. I've looked it over. I've read the instruction manual. Um, I've gone back and watched Losey's video of it, of you know how they went through developing and designing and redesigning and redesigning and redesigning this to make it as good of a motorcycle as they possibly could with the technologies that they have. Um, and man, they nailed it. This bike looks awesome. It is huge. Just a size comparison. That's a Tamiya Frog. You know, that's a 10 scale buggy. You know, the Monster Beetle. I mean, the tires on this thing dwarf the tires on the Monster Beetle. Um, it's amazing. So just for sizing, you know, this thing is like 17, 17 and a half inches tall. It's like almost 21 inches long. The tires are six inches around. You know, this thing is just absolutely awesome. I can't say anything more about it. Um, you know, the licensed Dunlop tires, you know, they look just like the Dunlop tires, you know, fronts and rears. They did the tires perfectly. They have the Dunlop written on the side of them, has the real chain. And, you know, it's the perfect scale for this. The sprocket, you know, looks like any other, you know, motocross sprocket. You know, they didn't make just a generic sprocket. They have it relief cut. So if you get mud and stuff in the chain, it squirts it out of the sprocket to keep it from wearing out the bottoms of the teeth and everything. You know, the shock. This has the dual mud guard um, the, like the overlapping mud guard to keep all the dirt and grime and crap off of the shock, just like a regular bike would. The spring away rear uh, fender is really, really cool. And, you know, it's just a simple little thing, but, you know, this can really save your day out there RCing when this thing flips over and rolls over and this thing just bends up out of the way. And, you know, it's just the thought that went into this, the engineering that went into this, the design work, you know, just the flywheel alone that's in here. And I'm not going to go into full depth of, you know, all the features and everything about it, but it's, it's a hefty guy. Um, and that flywheel is probably the majority of it. I think it's like a little over a pound in the flywheel itself. Um, but, you know, the rider, it's the best way I can describe this to you. It's like a foam filled baby doll head. It's like the squishy plastic of like a kid's baby doll head 
but the body is like foam filled so it is going to be rigid and it's not going to flap all around but it will bend and flex and move um as you roll it over the the head is the same thing it's the like the baby doll head but it has a nice plastic visor on there the clothes you know if this thing was painted it would have looked cool but having a real jersey and real pants on it you know takes it to a whole nother level um you know the front brake disc and the the cabling and everything you know that's all functional that's actually you know there's a caliper down here that you know stops the wheel and it's all run up through this cable down into the bike where you can't see it running off of a servo to stop the front wheel and I, they did that because they were relying off the brake on the rear wheel and it was you know fishtailing all about if you guys have ever ridden a dirt bike you know in our motorcycle in general you do a lot of front braking to slow the bike down and to set the bike up four turns and stuff like that where the rear you know if you need to slide around something um you know that offers a lot of control as well but generally you're doing a lot of braking up front as well as braking with the rear you know the driver's positioning is perfect you know he's not sitting up there like a billboard and he doesn't look like he's you know trying to jump off you know he's not doing some kind of evil Knievel jump or anything and when I first saw it I was like these things look weird um there is a lot of function in these and after you've kind of looked at the bike for a while you kind of forget that they're there you know you're when you're looking at the bike you're taking in all the bike you know how scale and perfectly detailed this is between the forks and the wheels and the tires and everything you know it just looks fantastic and another thing with the forks they have that crash back spring in it and the um like a stabilizing system on the front end so the front end can wiggle around a little bit but it's not going to flap about um which is going to be great out on the bumps and then this crash back you know if you do happen to flip it over or run into something you know that's going to give and take up some of the the momentum before you bend one of these really nice um forks and you know the suspension is just it's got a ridiculous amount of front suspension the rear is nice and slow and i'm assuming they did that so you could get it up on a wheelie and ride a wheelie with it but again i don't want to get too deep in the woods with it but i am just over the moon with this thing it is not a cheap kit i will give you that um it's one of the most more expensive kits that have come into the collection um but the amount of engineering and electronics and process that it took to make this I don't blame them at all for the price tag on this. Um, I was not originally going to get one. Um, you know, they went out on pre-order and I was just like, <gasps> and then I waited. I didn't want to just run out and buy it just because it looked awesome. I wanted to see what, how it drove, how people were you know, getting along with it. Were there any just, you know, were the, the head just going to snap off of it um, after you ran it one time? You know, was this chain going to be a constant failure point or something? <clears throat> but there have been quite a few videos on it. Everybody has had, you know, some issues. And with any RC, you're going to have some issues. Um, but there's not any, been anything that stood out over this last week that has said, you know, don't get it. Um, I really didn't want it to turn into another rift. <laughs> I hate that truck. Anyway, um, I am going to get it out and run it. Unfortunately, I don't have a battery connector. My two cell packs run Dean's and I have EC3, IC3, um, but I don't have the IC5s. Um, I generally don't run anything with that big of a battery connector on it um, because I generally stay, you know, 3S and under. So the IC3s are about, about as big as I go. Um, why they went with the IC5 on this, I don't know, unless there is a fairly high amp draw between the motors and all the servos in here. I don't know um, but my wife thankfully is running into town and she is picking me up some adapters um, I have a couple lipos I'm just gonna cut these off and solder new um, EC5s on not a big deal so these are Golbat 7200 milliamp 50c packs um, 
would have liked to have a, a little bit higher CPAC, but I have six or eight of these things. Um, so I didn't really want to buy just another battery just for this when I have two cells here. So we're gonna give it a try on this. It should run just fine. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be out there trying to rip it around, but so much. Um, but it does fit. Um, it's very, very snug. They do tell you in the instruction, the first few times you go to put the battery in and out, it may be very difficult to close the little battery door. So the battery door is underneath the seat and there is a captured pin holding it in there. They have it on a little tether, which is awesome. And then you pull down on the battery door and the exhaust drops away. And you have a little slot in there that you can run your battery leads into the slot. You slide your battery in, close up the door, your battery leads are coming down and your port to plug in is down here on a fixed point in the chassis. So very, very, very nice design. And the only thing that indicates, you know, hey, this is an RC is the outriggers and the on off switch that is buried up underneath of his leg. It's easy to get to, but it's out of sight. And I appreciate that as well. You know, they, they made it easy to, to get to and it's gonna be protected from turning itself off because of his legs are here. So it's not gonna just be pushed. Um, and it's not gonna be in a spot like underneath the seat where or back here where it's gonna get coated in mud and muck and yuck. Um, so. Like I said, they did, they nailed this one, you know, Losi and the designers and the engineers that came up with this one. And you guys get an A++ so far for me, just from sitting here looking at it. So one of the main drivers of me getting this is seeing Bryce from, um, Jack of Trades channel. Um, he got one on pre-order and he got it fairly early in the week and he is just over the moon with this thing. And he's already started redesigning stuff. He's made a, a smaller rear sprocket to get more speed out of it. Um, and he's already looking at ways of re-engineering things. So he made some 3D printed axle carriers to adjust the chain tension for that smaller chain and everything. Guy is an absolute genius with, you know, tinkering around with things like this. So I'm very excited to see what he's gonna come up with for his. You know, he was talking about possibly making an extended swing arm for it and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. So I have to see what Brian Bryce does with his, but I blame him for getting me kind of overly excited about this. And, you know, thanks again to my wonderful wife for surprising me with this. Um, this actually showed up the evening that we hit 3,000 subscribers. So I guess this is my 3,000 subscriber gift to myself or her gift to me, whatever. I'm, I don't care. <laughs> I'm happy. So I'm going to shut up. As soon as I can get a battery put in this thing, we're going to get it spooled up and we're going to take it outside for a run. I don't know if this is going to get around the track. I'm going to run it around the yard, try to get a feel for it for the first battery. And then if I feel good enough about it, I'll try to put it on a track. But I think this ginormous thing is going to struggle getting around my small little track. But we'll see. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know nothing about it <laughs> other than what I've seen. But so far, I'm very impressed. All right. See you guys outside.
All right, guys, so that was just the first battery on the first run of the Promoto MX from Losi. Um, my first impressions are, you know, one, we've already covered, it looks amazing. Um, two, it drives really, really easily, except for turning. <laughs> turning takes a good bit of practice and some throttle control and some brake control and still sometimes it falls over now where i was running it probably was not the best area um you know there's flower beds and trees and stuff around and i didn't see them up front but there was a lot of sticks and branches out there laying in the grass which was greatly affecting how it was turning you know it would start turning and then the front end would hit one of those little sticks in the ground and screw everything up and it would go a little bit wider but it does take a good bit of area to turn so you can like hit the brakes a little bit going into the turn and it does kind of help seem to get that front end planted so it will curve around a little bit more if you're just doing a coasting turn it's a big wide sweeping turn um but as far as taking off with it you know it's it's super simple you know you can literally just pick the bike up hold it and just kind of give it a little nudge and give it a tiny little bit of gas and it actually will stay upright at very low speeds so it's not something you have to go out there and leave the controller up to 100 percent to have fun with it i would say probably the better thing is to turn it down to 50 to 75 percent when you're first running it but you know i i couldn't resist and i wanted to see it do wheelies um wheelie mode is fun now it can get you into trouble when you get on the gas a little bit much in a curve like you're trying to corner and you're trying to power out of a corner next thing you know the front ends up and then the whole bike's doing this because it's trying to you know self-correct itself overall it was a great experience um there's just a couple things i want to note one i did put in a picture of i got a little too close to one of the flower beds and got into some of the little um grassy bits of it and it had a bunch of grass wrapped up around the rear um axle area um, if you guys are running it in tall grass if you run it into any tall grass stop and double check to make sure you don't have grass and stuff torn up in there um, the problem is is there is a fairly decent sized little gap in between the hub and the actual swing arm and that grass will get down in there and it will just bury itself and it will take dry wet grass and turn into dry grass really fast and start melting plastic in there so you guys do happen to run through a bunch of tall grass as you're driving it and it comes out you know just stop and make sure you don't have a bunch of grass wrapped around there and not tearing up the little faux rotor or the brake caliper or getting up into the chain and the sprocket or getting in between the the hub and the actual swing arm itself um the little rear um breakaway fender is you know that was a necessity for this bike because as you're driving and you get up on a wheelie and it dips you know the bike wants to come back real quick and this thing pops up and you ride on the little skid plate now i did at some point lose the little rubber end cap to the exhaust pipe um, it's just a little rubber piece that kind of snaps into the plastic exhaust. Um, now, luckily, since I was only going in a fairly small little area, I was able to find it pretty quickly. Um, but hopefully they'll have replacements for those because I can see a lot of people, you know, if you're out in a big field somewhere ripping this thing around and you come back and it has no exhaust tip, good luck finding it. Um, I ran basically one full battery pack through it and it is hot outside um, my shirt is wet if you, <laughs> i don't think you can see it on the camera but yes i'm i'm very sweaty and that was just from 15 minutes of running around and you know going and picking up and moving it and stuff like that um the motors do get pretty warm so when i picked it up you could feel up front that the flywheel motor was pretty warm and then when i took the battery out this battery pack was actually hot if you know lipos lipos don't generally get hot so basically the rear motor is right up underneath of that battery pack and it caused the the battery to actually get pretty warm so this thing does get pretty hot um now of course i was out there ripping it around and doing wheelies and you know it's it's on and off on and off on and off kind of modulate those wheelies so 
doing that type of driving, it is going to get a little warm. So, you know, it's also like 90 some degrees out and mega humidity, so it's not going to cool off either. <laughs> so I decided after the first pack, I was hot, it was hot. So just bring it in, let everything cool down. I'll probably either take it back out this evening or take it out tomorrow, get a little bit more practice with it. And once I get a little bit more confident with it, I may try to take it on the track. But again, my little track and this big bike probably aren't going to mesh well together. And, you know, it's probably just going to be a, a, a hilarious bunch of, um, you know, falling over and wrecking. So this may just stay out in the yard. Um, if you have a small yard, go somewhere else. You know, go to a baseball field or, um, you know, a park or something like that um, to learn how to drive it first. If you have a small, tiny yard, this is going to be really, really difficult to try to get it to turn around and, you know, do anything but just circles. Um, so I suggest if you, if you have a small yard, you know, go down to your local park, make sure you're far away from people because this thing can, you know, kind of, you, if... So if you're turning to the left and you get on the gas and it snaps up, well, next thing you know, it kind of flops over to the right and you're like taking a beeline towards the right. So just make sure you're not close to like little kids or anything in a park where you can hit somebody with this thing. Because again, it's stout. Um, it took a couple good tumbles. You know, it did one giant cartwheel, just, you know, fender, 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 fender. Uh, rear, fine. Front does have some little bit of, you know, creasing. Um, I'll try to take a picture of it, but you can see where the plastic bent and kind of um, stressed. But I know they have, they're gonna have plenty of the body plastics and everything. So hopefully you can get just the front fender by itself if this does get damaged. But you know, it creased, it came back. It's not, you know, permanently bent or anything. Um, overall, I don't have any complaints with it. Um, you know, it's incredibly fun. Um, and for a motorcycle, it's actually fairly easy to drive. You know, obviously, like I said, learning how to turn, learning how to, you know, corner with it and stuff like that is going to be the hard part. And I still have a long ways to go there. But as far as, you know, just getting it up and driving, it works great. Now, this is a really, really, really cool idea. They give you two big stakes to stake this thing down to the ground. So once you have it calibrated and you do have to basically turn everything on and let the thing calibrate and it goes through a series of tones and once the tones are done, you're good. Then you can set it in this or set it on this and get the flywheel up to speed. It says give it 30 seconds, but I think mine within 15 seconds was up to speed. And you can kind of hear it once it hits a solid tone that it's up to speed. And once it's up to speed, you know, you can basically just take it off the stand and push it away and give it some gas and it's gone. But this is great. So if you guys are racing with each other, say there's two of you, stake this down to the ground, put one bike in here, one bike in here, and you guys could just go up to the driver's stand or wherever and not be standing there holding them. The only thing that they could have done better with this is to give you somewhere to put these two little stakes. If they had put like a clip or a hole or something back here where those stakes would, you know, set in, that would be, that would have been absolutely perfect. Otherwise, I can't fault anything. <laughs> you know, if I had to find one thing that I did not like about it is you just have to carry around two big ass nails with you. But again, you really don't need this if you're not racing it. Uh, if you're not racing with buddies or whatever, all you gotta do is just take out the stand with you, get the flywheel up to speed, and then you can just hand launch it. And you know, you don't need the little stakes. Um, and technically you could basically put this out there and this should hold it up. You know, basically once the flywheel's up to speed, it wants to stand up anyway. So you could technically use these without the stakes, but the stakes do help. And I just stabbed them down the ground super easy. Um, <clears throat> Radio, I didn't change anything on the radio. I drove it exactly how it was set. Everything worked well. The brakes work seemed to work well. Um, if you get on the brakes really hard, you can see the rear lock up, but the front didn't seem to want to lock up and slide out. So it seems like everything was set really well from the, the factory. Now, one thing, when you do go to turn it off, don't just turn the bike off because it's gonna take five minutes for that flywheel to slow down. When you stop the bike, put it up on the stand, put it back in the carriage, whatever, and then turn the flywheel button off and it actually has a little bit of drag brake on the motor and it will slow that motor down in under a minute to where then you can just turn everything off and you're good to go. Now, obviously, if you run it to low voltage cutoff, I don't know if it still works, but so I did it on mine. It took probably less than a minute for it to slow down. But anyway, guys, that's all my first impressions and ideas about this thing. There will be more on it. Everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you guys on the next one. See you.